Hey, Bryson from Trick Tools here. We're going to be working on a new project. Uh, it should be a fairly simple one, but uh, we're going to be building a new fuel tank for the drag bike uh, that you may have seen in some of our other videos uh, last year that we built a whole new aluminum body for. So uh, this tank here has been around for over 20 years. It's seen many, many trips down the track and uh, it's just worn out. So it's time to build a new one and something that will just replace it basically as is. So we're going to be essentially duplicating this tank, um, just maybe with a few minor visual upgrades, uh, some bead rolling and such on the new tank. So we're going to walk you guys through the process of how to make this happen, and uh, hopefully you'll learn something. So some of the initial details on this tank that we are going to make sure we duplicate again on the new tank uh, will be the fuel filler neck location, uh, we have a new cap and neck to go uh, on the new tank and then we also need to get the uh, bung here on the bottom where the fuel will feed uh, down obviously for the engine uh, out of here. So uh, we have another bung that we're going to be placing on the new tank to replace this one. Uh, you know you can see some of the issues here. This one started getting a little crack in the weld and some quick racetrack fixes, JB weld and such to fix it. So. Uh, we're going to be cleaning that up and uh, duplicating all the mounting locations. So, so some of the things we're going to be updating on this tank are the front mounts here. So there's a tube in the chassis that goes across here that these tabs just kind of notch onto. Uh, and that's what holds the front in place. And then it drops in with some Zeus mounts in the back. So on these front tabs, uh, these were included in the side panel. So they were just cut into the shape of the side panel and then welded on the inside here. Uh, but it's still just the thin aluminum that the material for the tank is. So uh, over the years that it's worn out. So what we're going to be doing, instead of including it in the side, we're going to make the tank shape, get that all welded with a nice corner weld. And then we're going to make a new bracket out of eighth inch plate uh, aluminum and then weld that on the outside to then give us a thicker, stronger piece. Uh, that won't wear out uh, as quickly on the on that bar in the front. So um, still going to be going with the same style of mount, but just done differently. So, and then in the rear, this was bent onto the material for the bottom and sides of the tank that was bent there for this bracket and then welded. Um, you know, it, it definitely can be done that way, but we're going to be doing it a little differently. We're just going to have a nice corner weld across here and then we'll weld on a new piece uh, to give some more rigidity to this back flange. So, uh, we're going to update that. The rest of this tank is pretty smooth as far as the top and bottom surfaces. They did have a nice little bead roll uh, detail line in here. So what we're going to be doing is probably doing somewhat of a little bit of a recess in the side just for some style on a bead roller. Maybe put a line or two in the bottom and top uh, just to kind of update it a little bit, add some strength into some of these pieces. And uh, that's pretty much up for the updates, but uh, other than that, the shapes are all going to be the same on the tank so it can fit in the chassis just the way that this one intended to. All right, so to start the tank here, um, got a sheet of aluminum here that I already started making some measurements on uh, to get the tank started, um, but I'll show you what my thoughts were here uh, on this process. So uh, this tank actually has a slight taper in it. It's, it's a little bit narrower at the backside here and it's a little wider at the front. So uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, just obviously getting those measurements, laying them out on here, making the uh, marks where we need our bend line uh, that's going to bend here on the bottom. And then what will happen is this basically the whole bottom and the two sides are going to be the one piece. So that's what this panel is going to be. And then we'll make the top panel, which will be uh, this section here all the way to the front and that'll get welded all the way around these outside edges. So uh, on this bottom one, bottom panel here, uh, I measured out the, the widths here. So uh, on the back edge, we've got five and a half inches wide. On the front, we have six inches wide. So duplicating that here, uh, measured this out. Uh, I cut this piece at 13 inches based on measurements of the width and the height and how wide I was going to need it. So uh, got 13 inches here and then so I marked the center line and then I marked uh, the two and three quarter inches out on each side to give me the five and a half width I need here at my bend lines and did the same thing on the front for the six inch width. Uh, so I measured three inches out from the center line on both sides. So 
Um, in order to get the side shape from the tank, I took this piece, just laid it out on here and lined up my bottom edges of the tank where my bend lines will be. And then marked out the few points, traced the uh, round shape on the back here, the angle on the front, just to make sure I got all that duplicated. So in order to make sure that these sides match though, instead of just flipping the tank over and drawing it here, in order to make sure that they do match, what I'm gonna do is get, get this side finished cut out. And then once that's done, I'm gonna make a paper template uh, to be able to have that exact shape of this side. And I'll lay it on this side, duplicate it, just to ensure that both sides are identical. So uh, we're gonna keep working on that and then we'll move on to the next steps. All right, so now that I got the template cut out uh, to match this side, we'll just flip it over here, get it lined up with our lines properly, and trace it out, and then we'll cut out this side to match, and then we'll start laying out our bead rolls uh, that are gonna be on this panel. All right, so we've got the lines that we want to bead roll laid out on here. So what I'm going to be doing on the side areas here is going to be doing a little recess section. I um, think what I'm going to do in the front is just kind of taper the lines off into nothing. Instead of making a rounded corner here to kind of match what I'm doing in the rear, uh, I want to just probably start here and I'll just kind of tighten the machine down as I uh, go into the bead here and then do my bead around here and then I'll slowly back off the machine as I get around the other side. And we'll do that on both sides here. And then I've got two lines right here uh, that I'm gonna be bead rolling just to put a little bead uh, in the bottom of the tank. We've got the whole location marked for uh, where we're gonna need the bung for the fuel line. Uh, and that's gonna have to be drilled out to a three quarter inch hole uh, to fit the three quarter inch recess uh, that's on the bottom of this bung. For placement there and then that'll get welded so um, we'll go ahead and uh, get this bead rolled and then at that point once this is bead rolled we got the hole done we can break the sides up and then we'll start working on the top piece all right so as we get ready to start bead rolling here um, we're going to be doing the recess sections uh, in the sides of the tank first um, I've got the dies set up to where basically all my lines here are drawn on the inside or what will be the inside surface of the tank uh, after it's bent. Uh, so I've got the dies set up to where it's going to be uh, the section in the middle where I have my lines. It's going to be pushing that up 
Uh, so uh, basically the way I like to set up the bead roller, uh, this is the Mittler Brothers 36 inch machine. It's got the industrial motor on it, foot pedal control. So I like to set it up to where um, it's at a nice controllable speed and that's gonna be all based on what exactly I'm bead rolling. So if I'm just doing a straight line and it's kind of long, I'll speed the machine up. If I do have an area that's got a nice tight bend in it that I have to you know, go around, I'll turn the machine down uh, just enough to allow me to back the pedal off and really slow the machine down and get a nice radius on that. So um, I'm gonna start in on the side here and then we'll uh, tighten the machine down. We'll go around, I'll make the turn and then come back around that way. So. Uh, so as I'm doing this, just trying to find the sweet spot on the pedal that's going to give me the speed I want. Um, but I'd like to go a little faster on the straight lines, obviously back it off on you know the tight radius like that. So uh, I'm going to do the straight line and as I get to the end here, I'm going to start backing off the machine uh, to create a nice taper look uh, just as I tighten the machine up as I started going on the other side. All right, so now I'm going to be swapping out the 16th step that we used for the recess on the sides uh, for a 3 16th uh, beading die. And that's what we're going to use on the bottom uh, to put a couple of straight lines in there and just give it a little bit of rigidity to the open flat area on the bottom of the tank. Like I said, I like to speed up the machine a little bit on just straight lines. Uh, it helps me actually get a little straighter because uh, there's less time for you to wiggle back and forth. So um, we'll just get these done here. I think I'm actually gonna speed up the machine uh, a little bit more on this other one. Uh, you can see the line there. And I'll probably go over them again just to uh, create a little more shape in there. But for right now, we'll do the second one to match this one, then we'll go over both of them again uh, a little tighter. So basically what I'm gonna do is just tighten this down a little more. I'm gonna flip the machine around, flip it in reverse, and just come back the other way. So we got that in reverse. Uh, I'm gonna go one round tighter. So I backed it off five turns and I'm gonna tighten it back up five turns on this one and do the same thing. All right, so we got the bead rolling done on this uh, bottom panel here. Um, we've got the straight lines put in the bottom section. Uh, my recesses on the sides. Um, what I do right now is uh, punch this mark here and then we'll uh, put a hole in it there for the 
uh, bung for the fuel line. And then once we do that, uh, we'll, we'll bend these ends up and then we'll go from this and start making our uh, top panel uh, for the tank here. So. All right, so you can see here, we've got the bottom uh, bent up. It's got our bead rolls in it. Uh, we got the same profile on the new piece as we did the old tank. So at this point, now we're going to uh, make the top section here. And uh, once we get that piece done uh, or cut out, uh, basically, it's going to be pretty flat on the top here. It's flat here. It'll have a bend in it uh, here, a break in it, and then we'll have to put a radius on the back edge here uh, to meet up with the back here. Uh, and then we'll figure out exactly uh, the whole location off of the original tank and uh, put a hole in the new panel to hold the new uh, cap and filler neck here. So. Um, We'll have to figure out what size hole we're going to need exactly. Uh, use my little hole template here. That's a two and a half inch hole, and we've got to go a little bit smaller than that because it's got a little step machined in it that's going to sit down in the tank and then we'll weld around there. So um, we'll probably drill it out to two and a quarter first and then use a uh, drum sander or something like that to open the hole up just a little more. So um, we'll get working on that top piece. All right, so for the top panel for the fuel tank here, I've um, got a piece cut out here. Uh, I measured the width at the rear and the width at the front, and uh, I've got that marked out um, on both sides of this panel here. Uh, I measured the using a flexible tape measure, so something that is bendy. Uh, I measured the length around here to get me uh, how long my piece needed to be or at least really close if I need to do a final trim at the end That's fine, but uh, got it really close uh, So I marked that out. I'm gonna go ahead and trim the sides here and then we'll start forming it to fit the top of this All right, so uh, right at the end of the day yesterday, we got this top panel trimmed uh, to the widths that we needed to match the bottom here. Uh, and then we marked and bent the front edge here to fit our angle. Uh, so at this point, we're gonna mark out and lay, uh, lay out the, the radius here on the top to match the back edge. Uh, and then at that point, we're gonna figure out if we wanna do any kind of bead roll in here, and then we'll locate the gas cap 
where that's going to be, but I'm probably going to drill that after the tank is welded. Um, and mainly because I've found out in the past that if you cut a big hole in something before you weld it, sometimes it can cause extra warpage in that area uh, while you weld it. So we'll cut that after the fact. Uh, so we're just going to keep shaping this and uh, we'll get this thing tacked together pretty quickly here. So in order to put the radius on the back end of this panel here, I'm going to go ahead and use the English wheel for that. I've got the completely flat lower anvil in here uh, and I've got the rubber band on the top. So uh, we're going to use that to create the radius in here. Uh, there's different ways to do it. I'm just showing a different way to do it here. Uh, obviously, if you have a radius break or uh, you can do it by hand, uh, you know, bend it over your leg, that sort of thing. Uh, there's there's multiple ways to do it. Just want to show you guys on the English wheel, the rubber band here. So. Um, We'll get this uh, radius put in here and you know kind of fit it back and forth as we create some more shape in here. All right, as you can see, we're uh, really close here on our shape, uh, which is good because we can easily fit it as we're tacking it in place to get it dialed in. <clears throat> um, basically at this point, um, I'm gonna locate where the filler neck here has to be on the top and uh, get that at least marked out. Uh, I'm not gonna drill it until um, after the tank is welded so to keep the tank a little more solid uh, and keep this top edge from warping at all. So once I mark where this filler cap has to be, uh, we'll figure out if we want to do some kind of bead roll or something in here uh, for just a little, little bit of style in here before we uh, tack weld it all together. All right guys, so uh, got the panel shaped up here. Put a couple of bead roll lines right here in the in the top just to add a little bit of style into it. Nothing really, uh, you know, structural going on there. Obviously it, it does stiffen the panel, but with as small and narrow as this tank is, it's not really to keep it from doing anything uh, in particular, more just to put some uh, style in the, in the top of it here. We got the location marked out for the, where the filler neck will go. So at this point, we are going to start fitting it and uh, tacking it in place uh, and get these two pieces tacked up, welded together. Uh, before I do that, I'll go through and uh, clean off all my Sharpie marks inside and out. Anywhere there's Sharpie lines, I'll get those cleaned out, get the inside surface of the material clean, and then start tacking them together. So shortly here, we should have a uh, tacked together and then welded up fuel tank and the only thing left to do at that point will be to weld the bungs on uh, to have the main tank done and then at that point it's just a matter of uh, making the mounting brackets for it so uh, we'll keep going.
All right, so we've got the tank uh, finished tacked together here, uh, went through after the fact and smoothed up all the tacks. So I used a little disc sander uh, just to touch up the tacks to smooth them out. Because what that does is when you go to weld it, uh, it makes it to where you don't see the little bumps in your weld everywhere you had a tack. So uh, this will make it to where when we get the weld done, it'll be nice and smooth uh, all around uh, throughout the weld. So also went through with a 400 grit DA sander uh, and sanded the whole surface and then um, had a scotch Bright hand pad after that with water on it just to uh, go back and forth on it, kind of create a little bit more of a brush to look uh, and finish it off that way. So at this point, we're gonna get these welds done uh, and then that portion will be done on the tank. And then uh, once that's uh, ready to handle after that, we'll get the bung welded on the bottom here. We'll get the cap cut in and welded on the top and then we'll weld our mounting brackets on the front and rear and this tank will be done. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get to welding. All right, we got the filler neck welded on the top here. Uh, got the bung welded on the bottom. Uh, went ahead and made the mounting bracket for the back side of the tank here, uh, duplicating what was on the other, uh, of the original tank. Put the holes for the Zeus fasteners in there. Uh, and then I did make these quick brackets to basically duplicate what was on the original tank as well. But these are separate and they're also made out of eighth inch plate. So they'll be a little more uh, rigid uh, for long-term use. So uh, basically at this point, all we're gonna do is tack these on here on the front and then weld them on, weld them back on and this tank uh, project is done. So uh, we're gonna get these welded.
All right, so we got the mounts all finished welded on here. Uh, and at this point, that brings an end to our tank build for the drag bike. So we'll show you guys some pictures of it mounted in the bike. And uh, we'll be looking forward to our next project that we can show you guys uh, and show you some of the build steps on how to build uh, a project from start to finish. So hopefully you enjoyed watching this and uh, we'll see you soon.